Hey folks, it's Van Jungbeck and um, I haven't been doing lessons for a while and today I'm in, ho in a hotel room here in Hanover because I have so little time touring so much the last month in this uh, summer period that I have no time to produce new stuff but I think you deserve a, le a lesson so here it is. So today I want to talk uh, with you about some minor descents and some movements in minor chords that are important and we're talking about this James Bond thing like you know and of course the funny Valentine thing and how to make use of that in gypsy swing for example playing ballads or even play La Pompe so the first thing that I want to show you is very beautiful and this is the the rise from the fifth to the natural six so and there's a lot of options to play this movement and it's played a lot also in gypsy jazz for example in the bridge of um, Brazil there is a moment where you play this on the A minor chord and there are a lot of different voicings for this one so basically we talk about a triad like I can do it in A minor if you like so this is the bar chord A minor that you probably all know no big deal so in gypsy jazz there is several ways to do it but I will first I will start with the bar chord so the most obvious thing of um, performing that movement from the fifth to the a natural six that means from E over F to F sharp is doing it all in the bar chord so you do like A minor then you're changing to A minor flat six and A minor natural six the disadvantage of that chord is that it's very difficult to play actually I mean this is okay then you've got to stretch the pinky if you're used to bar chords that might not be a problem but still it's not really a very comfortable chord when playing La Pompe when playing gypsy jazz rhythm guitar as you would probably all consider so and there is another option to do it that I consider is very good and I want to show you this option so when I play La Pompe I don't use the bar chord. So let's say I want to have a natural A minor with no options. I would play it like this. So I got my thumb over the fretboard here for playing A. And then I got like E, A and a little banded index. And I'm losing the E string here, but that's fine because the E string has a very high sound that's not so good for gypsy jazz in playing rhythm guitar. And there are a lot of other videos where I show let's say idiomatic chord voicings and where you can see that for rhythm guitar a lot of times you leave out the high E string for some reasons on some voicings not all the time but sometimes and this in this case it's typical so if you have problems you know covering the low E with your thumb just leave it you can also just play the middle strings like from E to E so now in that chord that movement is very easy so you do the movement on the B string E which is the fifth F, which is the flat six, and then the natural, th the natural six, F sharp. So what you do is like playing it like. For the last chord, you gotta change the voicing, but this is very handy. It's way easier to play in a solid groove than, than this one. Now comes the F with the middle finger. And then the pinky is playing F sharp. And you can even go for the seven. Like now you say you love me. So you can do that, or I don't know what you prefer for the last chord. But this is a movement that goes from the fifth all the way to the small seven. And at this moment, you know, it's very, it, it comes in pretty handy. So there's another option, and this is just killing. The next option I like very much. So you put, uh, again, you use the A string, but this time you put this movement into the bass. And that sounds awesome. So when you want to have the E in the bass, which you have here as well, of course, now I'm playing the chord in that direction. So I'm playing the E here, and then I have my A minor triad. It's a bit of a stretch. I have it in the... 10th um, fret with C in the 10th fret on the D string, E on the G string, 9th fret, and the pinky is playing the root A on the B string. 
this is the triad, like C, E, A, and on that triad, triad I'm playing the fifth in the bass. And so now I can just switch, like, now you say you love me. So this is really cool. Up to the seven, or, or back to the six depending on what the song demands, but this is one of those movements. And so, you can leave the triad uh, all the time. This is the advantage of that voicing. The triad doesn't change, so you're just you know, moving the index upwards. And then, if you want to have the seven, then you have to change fingers at that point. So my middle finger then is going up here to play the G, and the index is uh, takes over the E. This is one of the options, you know. So the last one that's probably um, that's probably handy. I mean, there is even a couple of more. So the, the next one, I would say the next one in A minor is of course with the open string. That's cool. So if you do that in a bar chord, it's tricky, especially if it's not A minor, because up here the fretboard is very small, but course when you perform it from let's say C minor you play the regular bar chord from the A string and then you do the same that we had here in the beginning you just let the fifth move on, on the D string here in that case so we start on the A string C minor and then on the D string we go from G to A flat and A calling it A flat and not G sharp because usually in the key of C minor or in any key where the chord C minor appears uh, it happens uh, to be that there is no um, sharp notes in there so I say like G flat, A, A flat instead of G, G sharp, A and then A flat which would be correct if you would only you know name the melody but this is theory talk and it doesn't really matter here so this option is also possible but it's kind of a big stretch especially for the last one when you're in the lower reg register of the fretboard up here I mean it's easy but here it's maybe hard so and um, the last option is and this is happens for example when you let's say we play bossa dorado we have the same movement here from the D string which is in a bar chord almost I th yeah I think in a bar chord this is not very good you know so you got to you got to stick to it in the open position and when you have it on a bar chord you know some people play what we just have play it here here it's not really handy too high and um, what you even if you do it like this that maybe it's too low for the for the melody movement you recognize it but it's probably not the right choice so if the solo player is playing like this what you can do is like playing in a rhythm D minor then D minor with B flat in the bass, which makes it somehow B flat major 7, and then D minor with natural B in the bass. So the soloist, soloist is playing. And you're going like. And you play rhythm guitar like that. That's also working. So you put in the bass use voicings that you already know because you would call this a D minor triad I guess B flat major 7 and B half diminished that's also working so um, the next movement in minor that I want to show you is um, or I think I put it in another video that was probably enough and I also want to make my video a bit shorter so I hope that helped you so it's a gathering of um, let's say you know, things that you can do on the D minor chord when you want to have this race from the 5th to the natural 6 or even to the 7. So that's what I basically do in Gypsy Jazz and I hope that helped you and if yes, subscribe to my channel. There's tons of material on my channel, you know, great players playing and also uh, lots of lessons, you know, concerning idiomatic chord voicings but also other things like licks and stuff. So 
See you soon. Bye.